the island of Nantucket. Uh, some of you may have heard in the promotion that the National Geographic has named it as the top island on the planet. I don't disagree. Uh, the National Park Service um, cites it as being the finest surviving architectural and environmental example of a late 18th and early 19th century New England seaport town. All of that is true. Um, I thought well, what I'd like to do to begin is to kind of set, settle you into the place. Um, talk about the geography, um, how to get there, the funny name, and some history. And after all of that, we'll, we'll start our tour. So um, the screen has a, a picture of Nantucket oh, in front of it. Hey, um, yes. Eileen, yes. Cl click on the, the button at the top, at the very top left, right, uh, just a little bit to the, there you go. Okay. okay. Now, Thank you very much. much All right. Okay. So um, it has a kind of half moon shape. Uh, the town is where the red dot is. That's the center of life on Nantucket, but there will be other places. Um, we're going to be talking about Walwinet at the top right. Uh, we're going to go down to Sconset on the top, uh, the bottom uh, uh, right. We're going to uh, go over Mattaquet on the western side. We'll visit some of the beaches and um, all of it is going to be fun and exciting. Um, let me start with um, where it is. It's 30 miles south of Cape Cod. I didn't know that. I knew the name, but I never knew where it was until I got invited to, to go there. It's actually about 14 miles long and three and a half miles wide. Um, it's 40% um, of the land is in conservation. Uh, they're very, uh, very mindful of that because the waves that are beating on the land um, have given it a shifting shape and, and they fight back with environmental measures. How do you get there? Well, um, several ways. Um, <clears throat> most people either fly in, um, they have an airport there, as you can see. Um, but um, and I think um, as of last year, um, Cape Air, JetBlue and American all flew into Nantucket from here. Um, the second common way is to take the ferry and there are two lines, the High Line and the Steamship Authority. Uh, the latter also takes cars, but you do have to book early because um, there's only so much room. And of course, if the weather's bad, the, the ferries won't go at all. Um, so as you're on the ferry coming in, what you are going to see is the Brant Point Lighthouse. And every time I see it, my eyes light up because I know I'm coming to my second home. There's a tradition to throw a penny in the water when you're leaving to make sure that you come back. So I always manage a penny. Um, when we get into uh, the, uh, the town, um, we're going to um, see that um, and shop a little bit. Um, let me talk a little bit about the, the name. Um, it was given to it by the Wampanoag tribe. They were part of the Algonquian nation. They actually inhabited the island for 5,000 years and they named it Nantucket. And it meant either faraway land or sandy, sterile soil tempting no one, which is kind of funny because these days it has a 10,000 year round population, but it swells to 50,000 in the summer. So Nantucket to me has everything. And, um, and that includes some stories. So let me tell you some stories from yesteryear. Uh, the early history um, has it that a gray whale showed up in the harbor and uh, it was pursued and killed by the settlers. This is in the 17th century. And this one event started the entire Nantucket whaling industry. Whale oil was what kept the, the, the lights on until petroleum came along in the 19th century. So the whaling industry was actually the, the mobile of its day. And some say it was our first global economy. Uh, it was the leading whale industry in the world. So th things were very good for a while. Um, they had beautiful houses and such, um, brick houses. Um, but in, um, in 1820, an event occurred that would have repercussions. There was a Nantucket whaler ship named the Essex. There it is. 
And uh, it was um, sailing through the waters in uh, Southern Pacific Ocean when a sperm whale came along and sank the ship. Um, there were about 20 uh, crew on board and um, they went for weeks um, trying to reach the mainland, which was about 2,000 miles away. Well, that story captured the imagination of one of our writers named Herman Melville. And so um, he filled it with characters right out of Nantucket. Ahab and Starbuck were, were actual people. And um, he wrote about this um, event he, or about the whaling industry. He said, um, two thirds of this terraqueous globe are the Nantucketers for the sea is his, he owns it as emperors own empires. That I thought was a beautiful passage. So they were sailing along the richest, the richest place in the world for a time. And in the 19th century, three disasters struck. First off, um, they had a fire in 1846. It was a devastating event. It, they lost over a million dollars worth in property. Three or 400 buildings in the downtown were lost. And um, it started in a hat shop and created havoc for, for Nantucket. Following that, um, the, the harbor began to silt up. And so the new whaling ships couldn't get into the harbor and they went over to New Bedford. So commerce was, uh, was being lost. And then the final blow was the Civil War, when the Confederates would come in and um, fire on any ships that were in the harbor trying to do commerce. And so it was like a Rip Van Winkle moment where Nantucket went to sleep and it didn't wake up until the 20th century. So we're gonna start with uh, the 20th century experience now. And I'm going to, um, give you another quick view of the island because we will be talking about these various places. Of course, um, the way that you first experience it is from the water unless you're flying in. So I'm going to invite Pat to tell us about her experiences arriving in Nantucket on the water because the other way to arrive is on a yacht or a sailboat. Here's the Nantucket Marina. It's funny, I think of it like the Caribbean, they could just sail all year round. I'm surprised to find out there's snow in the winter. It just, it's such a wonderful island to sail to. And we would sail between uh, Cape Cod and uh, Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard, all wonderful places to sail. And when we came into to Nantucket, it was very shallow, a very shallow um, entry. And so you have to be real careful so you don't run aground. But our, our friend Bob, who had a, a choily catch that we would uh, sail on uh, frequently up there, said he, he was intrigued with the stories that Eileen almost touched on, which is that there was, there was a lot of whaling in the history of Nantucket. And he said he loved to, to think about the whaling ships coming in who had caught whales, and they were so bogged down with the weight that other ships had to come out with... with um, special stanchions to lift the boat a bit out of the water so it could actually arrive into the port. So it was, uh, it, they had to elevate it so that uh, the, the, the bounty uh, of whale meat could be um, brought all the way into port in Nantucket. Thanks, Eileen. Oh, thank you, Pat. Um, <clears throat> so when you um, get off your boat, um, you are on docks and um, there are several of them running in parallel. Um, they're full of these uh, beautiful gray shingled establishments. They could be bars and uh, uh, restaurants, souvenir shops, of course, and, uh, and dress shops. Um, you can book a whaling expedition there. Um, you can book a fishing expedition, or you can simply buy fresh fish to cook that evening. Um, the, the docks are alive and fun. <laughs> so, Let's start with an island tour, not in downtown. We'll come back to that at the end. Um, but I wanted to take you to the Northeast, which is called Wawinet. Um, it's, it's not even a village, it's a hamlet. 
And um, there is a very upscale hotel there. Um, when I checked the rates several years ago, it was $400 a night starting. Um, but they have a restaurant there. Um, beyond that, um, the access is four wheel drive only and it goes up to the Great Point Lighthouse. Um, we used to go there on Sunday evenings. Um, they would have a performance there with a shanty man singing sea songs, and you could depend on hearing Shenandoah before the night was out. It was lots of fun. Um, when you travel down the coast, um, you reach the village of, well, it's a town, actually. It's the other town on Nantucket called uh, Sconset. Its full name is Wisconsin, but everybody calls it Sconset. And Sconset um, is, um, has some of the oldest dwellings on the island dating back to the 17th century when it was a fishing village. Um, in the 20th century, um, it gained popularity as an artist colony and an actor's colony. And um, it's famous for its rows of cottages. Um, oh, there's, I'm sorry, there's the Walwinnet Hotel. And here are the cottages in Sconset. Um, and they're covered with roses. They're, they're quite lovely and, and very different looking from anything else you'll see anywhere. Um, so if you travel around the, to the south side, you're going to hit the Atlantic Ocean full force. Um, the waters are quite rough there, but there are some beaches that people like. Um, there's Surfside and there's Cisco. And there's Tom Never's Land, um, which is a community uh, populated by uh, Portuguese descendants. Uh, on the bay side, with the, war with the calm waters, um, we have things like Dionys and Jetties and Children's Beach. Um, we would pack a car full of um, chairs and a tent and lunch baskets and the car would drive over while the rest of us got on bicycles and went down the bike paths. Um, sometimes we would stop and pick blueberries along the way um, and we would spend the day on the ocean. You can see the dunes to the uh, left there. <clears throat> They are endangered now and you can't walk on the dunes any longer, but um, they certainly added to the beauty of the moment. Um, <clears throat> from there we swing west. At the western tip of Nantucket is a little place called Madiket. It's a small village. Um, it, uh, it has a famous, one of, one of Nantucket's famous ladies, Madiket Millie. Um, she was actually with uh, the U.S. Coast Guard and was credited with um, watching out for German submarines during World War II, training dogs for military personnel. And um, once a Panamanian uh, steamer came along and started to sink and she was able to sound the alarm, uh, which saved the ship and its crew. So Madiket Millie is quite famous in, on Nantucket. Um, all right, so let's, let's move to the town. Um, <clears throat> The town has so many attractions. And one of the biggest ones, of course, um, uh, addresses its heritage, the Whaling Museum. And in the Whaling Museum, um, there are exhibits of native peoples. There's an exhibit of the important ladies of Nantucket, um, lots of ship models, and, and this huge sperm whale jawbone, which just almost covers the, the length of the room there. Um, Next to it is the Athenium. The Athenium is a beautiful Greek revival style uh, library. And um, it's a wonderful place to take the kids for reading books or crafts. And um, there is a second Greek revival called the Hadwin House, um, a little farther out of town. And um, between the two of them, they are the examples of a lot of the architecture that was famous in the 19th century there. The next um, stop we're going to have is the Mariah Mitchell House and Observatory. It's actually two uh, places. There's the house, which is near downtown, and farther to the west is the observatory. Um, I was doing some research on it and um, it apparently has a valuable collection of over 8,000 wide field glass photographic plates recording observations of large swaths of sky from 1913 to 1995. 
uh, they, for over 50 years, I know that they have been uh, hosting internships for uh, summer students, and they also have open houses that you can go to and watch the night sky through their telescopes, um, a wonderful way to uh, entertain the family. Moving along, one of my favorite stops, this beautiful windmill um, is the oldest surviving one in the country. It dates from 1746. And it's still in use today. Um, you can go and uh, it turns out about five bushels of corn a minute. And you can go and buy your corn there. <laughs> Here's an interesting stopover. Um, this is the old gal. Um, I just thought I'd show you the picture of what it was like to be imprisoned um, by, uh, by the administration. Um, there was a story of a, a gentleman who was in there for several years, but well supplied with food from his family and crafts, and apparently he didn't have too bad a time. <laughs> All right. The fire hose corp. Fire hose cart house, hard to say. Um, I mentioned that they'd had a huge fire in 1846. The town has actually had 12 major fires since then. So having a firehouse is a big deal. Sconset didn't get one for a long time, but they do have one now. Um, but this picture shows the old um, uh, cart um, from, I guess the 18th, uh, rather the 19th century, I would think and being pulled. So after that, I um, wanted to talk about the events. And the events are numerous, especially in summertime, starting with this. This is Nantucket Race Week. Um, when you go over to Brand Point Lighthouse, <clears throat> you can um, sit on the, on the sand there and watch the amazing flotillas that come by. Um, they have an evening where the Boston Pops plays a concert um, to go along with the race. And um, there are award ceremonies and parties hosted by the Nantucket Yacht Club and the Great Harbor Yacht Club uh, to benefit community sailing. I thought I'd show you a picture of the uh, Great Harbor Yacht Club. Not a bad scene. Um, very pretty. All right. Um, other things to do in the evening, we would go down to a church or a, a, a public building and they have, they have concerts. We heard the Empire Brass one time. Uh, they have lectures on um, stars and environment and other science projects. Um, so there's a lively evening uh, opportunity for having an adventure. But one of the things that is most popular in Nantucket as an event is the Sandcastle Contest. And I mean, these guys are serious. Take a look at this. <laughs> they work, I guess, a week long to, to create these things. Um, and they is put on by the local Chamber of Commerce and the uh, Nantucket School of Design. And we actually, um, they give a lot of prizes. Um, we actually got a prize once. <laughs> um, the girls did. <clears throat> so sandcastles are, are big fun and lots of work. So after that, a lot of people would like to go and have a fancy drink and they do over at the uh, one of the island's most famous hotels. This is the White Elephant Hotel. And it's on the waterfront, of course, um, with the gray shingles and white trim. Um, it's a beautiful place, um, has a beautiful piano bar, restaurant, um, and of course, lodgings. So <clears throat> we all like to shop, right? Um, I'm going to take you on a tour of some of the, uh, the places that, um, that I like. But let me give you a little background first. Um, when you walk through the downtown, you will have an experience of um, meeting some of the founding families. Um, the Folgers, they were Benjamin Franklin's forebears on his mother's side. Um, Lucretia Mott was daughter of a Folger and a Coppin, and she became a leading abolitionist. 
the Macy's started a department store and produced the union general who accepted Lee's surrender at Appomattox, but more about that one later. Um, so <clears throat> uh, lots of names that uh, bring recognitions. Uh, there's a wonderful building called the Jared Coffin House. This is it. And um, it was founded by a Tristram Coffin, um, who was one of the founders. Um, it used to be a beautiful restaurant and hotel. The hotel remains. The restaurant has gone away. Well, it's transformed, actually. It's now serving Chinese food. I have no idea why. But <clears throat> we had a, um, a rehearsal dinner for a wedding there um, one New Year's Eve. It was lovely. OK. Um, Next, when you walk down the main street of Nantucket, uh, you will meet some of the other names. The Congdon's Drug Store is, recalls Thomas Congdon, who was another original settler. The ubiquitous Starbucks is named after the family who produced whaling captains. Uh, Jethro Mitchell and Mariah Mitchell's names are memorialized. In and next, well, not next to it, but up the block from Mitchell's is perhaps one of, well, it's one of the most famous places in the shop world in Nantucket. It's called Murray's, and it's famous for these. These are the famous Nantucket reds that the guys wear, and you just can't be seen in Nantucket without a set of reds. <laughs> um, another wonderful shop is the Nantucket Looms. I could spend hours in there looking at the beautiful fabrics and blankets and cushions that they have turned out. <clears throat> um, among my other favorites, there's Erica Wilson Embroidery Shop. She used to be famous for her needlepoint. Um, times have changed. She has uh, branched out so you can find uh, dresses and, uh, and still the needlework. Um, ice cream. The ice cream parlors are all around. Um, there used to be a lovely one with a courtyard setting and um, it has gone away, but there are about three or four uh, new ice cream shops. Um, some of them are close to the docks and um, they offer wonderful ice cream. Then there is the Pacific National Bank. And I mention it because um, my friend Tinka keeps <laughs> She keeps her recipe for quag chowder in the vault of the Pacific uh, National Bank. My husband actually started a checking account there because he thought the name was so hilarious. <laughs> and, and it's known for when you walk in the lobby, there is a, a gold uh, measure uh, in the lobby area, uh, reminiscent of the things that used to happen in the world of banking in Nantucket when the, when the ships came in. So besides the um, the commercial shops, um, and there was there was I have to mention that there used to be a beautiful one called Seven Seas. Um, you could walk the length of a block uh, from front to back. It was a long, narrow shop filled rooms filled with all sorts of uh, souvenir items. Let me just make the point that um, when Nantucket went to sleep in the 19th century. The grandchildren of those people who were still living in those homes would go up into the attics and they would find all sorts of things, paintings and scrimshaw and dresses, trunks full of whatever. And they began to realize that they had history in their homes. And that was the founding of the Nantucket Historical Association, which is one of the major organizations on the island. Um, one of the crafts that is not found, well, the, the knockoffs are found in the shops, but the real things are still made by uh, tradesmen. I'm going to show you a Nantucket light ship basket. Here it is. This is the top with the, um, the bird, and on the bottom is the actual signing. Uh, the lightship baskets um, have, um, they came out of the sailing tradition when the sailors would make these baskets on the ships 
and um, they had a wooden bottom and a rattan weave. The um, the ship, the, the sailors were forbidden to make the, the baskets in 1900. The government said you can't spend your time doing that anymore. But in the 1940s, a man named uh, Jose Reyes uh, developed the first purse uh, basket. And um, I'm lucky enough to have uh, one of the family's baskets um, that dates from 85. So um, it's, it's a fun purse to, to carry around. Um, when you're on the docks, as I mentioned, there's lots of things to do. Um, one of the fun things that I used to do was to go into a, a studio gallery by John Stobart. Um, Stobart was an English, is an English artist who um, on a trip to meet his father in South Africa fell in love with the sea and the ships and has spent his entire career um, drafting pictures of various ships in various settings. There could be the port of Old Alexandria, or the Port of Salem, or the Port of, and uh, name it, anywhere in the world. But um, it's a fascinating um, gallery, and um, his work is beautiful. So I recommend him, John Stobart. His main gallery has been in Salem, I believe, in Salem, Massachusetts. So what to do if you're going out of town? I know that a lot of uh, people who may not be into sailing or tennis um, are, might be into golf. So Nantucket has three golf clubs and um, I think I actually have a picture. Oh, there's the Pacific National Bank, sorry. And there's the golf club, uh, the Nantucket Golf Club, one of three. Um, people visit for the summer. So the season, as they call it, starts in May. It begins with Daffodil Weekend. And it continues until September with the Food and Wine Festival. And in between, you have things like the race week um, that we showed. The Boston Pops are in residence for a week. Um, concerts and uh, events going on everywhere. And of course, people are eating. The restaurants are everywhere. You can't, <laughs> you can't walk three feet without meeting a restaurant. <laughs> So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the Nantucket foods because they do have some uh, eccentric things. Um, there's the quag. I mentioned that my friend Tinka had um, a recipe for quag chowder passed on through many generations. Um, they're a kind of clam and with a funny spelling. Um, cranberries, the cranberry bogs in Nantucket are famous. Um, when you take a bike ride from Nantucket town over to Sconset, um, you will travel across the cranberry bogs. Um, the fish, of course, um, you, they come in all flavors. Um, bluefish and cod are, are um, ubiquitous. So the restaurants include um, names like the Straight Wharf, the Ships in Queequegs, um, and those are the downtown restaurants. Scosset actually has some lovely restaurants. I'm going to show you some. This is the Summer House. Um, Summer House was uh, named by Cape Cod Magazine uh, as um, a fine dining and piano bar awardee. It's across the street from another restaurant called the Chanticleer, which is the kind of the grand dame of Scosset. Um, I saw a a reference recently that said it was the kind of restaurant preferred by Rotarians. <laughs> I don't know what they meant. <laughs> but here's my favorite Sconset restaurant. This is um, right by the ocean with the pool in between. Um, you'll see on the left they've got a small set of shops, uh, outdoor shops, that are selling dresses and sweaters and such. Uh, but the just to sit down in the canopy in the breeze and stare at the ocean and be served your lunch or dinner is just a magnificent way to spend some time. I do love it there. So I thought I'd finish before we get to talking uh, about everybody's 
of ventures into Nantucket, I thought I'd tell you a couple of stories from my experience. Um, I've mentioned Tinka. Tinka is um, a longtime friend. Um, we met when she was the assistant dean of a Peabody Conservatory, and I was in the classical music business at the radio station. So um, she's godmother to our middle daughter, and um, she is a lifelong Nantucketer and a descendant of one of the founding uh, families, the Macy's. I mentioned earlier that General Macy had been the one to receive the sword at Appomattox. Well, that sword is in Tinka's house. She lives in a Greek revival home on Main Street, 123 Main. Um, it's um, just down the street from a, a set of three bricks, um, which a, a whaler built for his three daughters back in the 18th century. And if Dave Cordingly is on tonight, I know that Dave actually did lawn work around there when he was a college student. So we'll have to ask Dave later about that. Um, so Tinka lives in the second Macy home on the island and um, it happens to be a haunted house. So let me tell you the story. <clears throat> the first time we went there, she had been called back to Baltimore on an emergency and she said, uh, go buy your Portuguese bread and here are the keys and um, have a good time and I'll be there in a few days. And so we had our one-year-old daughter, Erin, with us. Um, Tinka had been entertaining another uh, family who also had young children the week before and they'd had a babysitter. And so we called the babysitter when we wanted to go out to, um, to dinner the second night. But the first night, let me start with the first night. We settled in. We were tired, we went to bed early, and the house is shaped so that when you enter the front door, there is a staircase that immediately goes up on the left to the second floor. You can proceed from the lobby area into the dining room, and then uh, that's in the middle of the house, and then there's family room is behind it at the end of the house. Our bedroom was on above the dining room. So it was about 9.30 at night. Marshall had already fallen asleep. I am reading and suddenly I hear footsteps. It seems that they are walking across the dining room. I'm freaking. I look for a phone. Is there a phone in this room? Oh, there's a phone. I wake Marshall up. We call the police. The police come over. Marshall has gotten up by now and he's walking with the police all through the house and nothing. So, okay, the police left, we went to sleep. Uh, the second night, we wanted to go out. We called the babysitter who had been there the week before. She couldn't do it, but she had a friend who she recommended and that friend arrived and we went off. Uh, Aaron was in a crib on the second floor. When we came back, we said, how are things? Fine, she said. Um, well, um, how's the baby? Um, well, she said, you know, I was afraid to go up because there were footsteps walking up and down and I was just freaking. I said, oh, I forgot to tell you, the floors creak because I didn't want to upset her. So the third day, Tinka and uh, a friend arrived. Um, he had the downstairs bedroom and uh, Tinka's bedroom was on the front second of the second floor. <laughs> and um, at breakfast the next morning, he said, Tinka, what were you doing up last night at one? And she said, I wasn't up at one. He said, well, I heard you walking. And at that point, I said, we have a confession to make. We've heard footsteps walking too. And Tinka just laughed. And she said, oh, that's my great grandmother, Lydia. She lives here too. <laughs> so, <laughs> in subsequent episodes, because I didn't believe in ghosts until then, um, the Dean of Hopkins was invited to be a guest one Thanksgiving. Um, Tinka was not in residence. And he asked her, who is the gray lady that lives here? Because he had seen the ghost. The dog, when um, her fiance, Fernando, arrived to do some work on the house, they came in the lobby. They went up the staircase off the lobby and halfway up the dog, whose name was Chico, Chico stopped and started to growl into the air. So we just have um, confirmation from several sources. <laughs> um, 
And um, so that's my, my haunted house story. And um, it, we've, we've had other stories. We were in Hurricane Bob when this came on island. And I looked out the back window. My car was parked near a tree. And I thought to myself, you know, that's not a good place for it. So I went out and I moved the car. And five minutes later, a tree landed right where my car had been. <laughs> And all of the trees along the main street, those that were Elm Streets, went down like a row of dominoes because Elms do not have a strong root system. <clears throat> and um, <laughs> this was another funny story because everybody was calling for the fire department to come out and assist. And Tinka, <laughs> Tinka would call them up and she'd say, Hello, boys. I've got fresh apple pie here. Would like to see you. And they were over there in a jiffy fixing our wires. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we've, we've had a lot of fun in Nantucket over the years. Um, so I know some of you have been there, and I'd love to hear your stories of Nantucket and the places that you love. So um, let's open this up for conversation. Thank you, Eileen. Then, um, that was great. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, you're better now. Pat. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank Mike Mulraney. He told me to go down to, to the mute button and press, press the arrow, and then I got a bar I could slide, and there were some couple bars that were all the way off, so I don't know how that happened. but. And um, let's see, Gail Van Buren asked, how many hotels are there in Nantucket? I don't know these days, um, because um, hotel, if you use the the um, strict definition, uh, there's the Wawinet, there's the White Elephant, there's the Jared Coffin, and um, probably three or four others. But most people go there and rent a house or um, a, a b and type situation. Great. So if uh, folks would like to, oh, let's see, we've got um, Karen as Lumpkins has her hand raised. Karen? And so if, if folks would like to comment, you can press the raise your hand button or um, you can type something into Q&A. And, Q and oh, and I have one last picture to show. I forgot, I have one last picture to show. There's Tinka. <laughs> this was taken many years ago um, when my children who are now edging to 40 were, were little ones. Um, and um, to Tinka's right is Millie, who was her surrogate mom. Um, Tinka, Tinka's wedding dress came out of a trunk. It was an 1832 wedding uh, dress that had been worn at a ball at, with Napoleon in Paris. And um, she went shopping for wedding dresses. <laughs> she had several from the family vaults, but um, she likes costumes. And so we all got dressed up one afternoon. Nice. Um, I think Karen's uh, mic is open now. Karen? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. I've gone to Nantucket a lot because I lived in Massachusetts. And I think one of the best times was the Christmas stroll in December. Mm. That was so much fun. Yeah. And yeah. also, I used to stay at the Anchor Inn. Uh-huh. And the history behind the Anchor Inn, it had to do with, I think, the movie Yours, Mine, and Ours. I don't think I know the movie. Well, it's, it's an old one. Um, I don't know who stars in it. But the Anchor Inn has a very, very interesting history. And um, as far as I know, three, four years ago, the same innkeepers were there. And um, they were so nice. I, I stayed there all the time. I, I went for the Daffodil uh, Festival. I would go um, in the fall. Mm -hmm. And I went to quite a few uh, Christmas strolls, and I always stayed at the Anchor Inn. I love the place because of the history. I'll check it out next time I'm there. Thank yes, you. Yes, you know, please do. Even if you just go in and say, "Oh, I heard about this from Karen Lumpkins," she probably will, will remember me because I was from Hingham. <laughs> okay. 
But yes, I, I love the island much better than Martha's Vineyard. You know, I've never gotten over to Martha's Vineyard. The reason is um, you can't get from one island to the other. You have to go back to Hyannis and take another ferry in order to get there. And so- No, no, I, I beg to differ because I took my brother, we were on Martha's Vineyard at Oak Bluff. Yes. And we took a boat from their dock straight into um, the harbor where you saw Brant Rock and you got off. You did, wow. Downtown, yes. That's yeah. interesting. I've never heard anybody say you could do that. <laughs> you can do it. I don't know if you can do it from every place, but you can do it from Oak Bluff. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. 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 And the, it's a really interesting place because because the guy was talking about the little schoolhouse that was the oldest something or other, and we went all around. And you know, but I do know you can do that. Okay, good to know. Thanks. <laughs> okay, thank Thanks. you, Eileen. Thank you. Okay, uh, Michael Moraney has his hand raised, and um, and then uh, there was a request, Eileen. Stop, if, could you stop sharing the uh, PowerPoint? Yeah. Uh, the audience wants to see your, your beautiful oh, okay. faces. Stop. Uh, Down right. at the bottom. Yeah, at the yeah, top. Got it. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, now we can see you. That actually was why I raised my hand, just to say. Oh, okay. Go back to gallery view. Okay. And, uh, Steve, I don't know if you want to put everybody in gallery view, because all we can see is uh, Pat and Eileen right now. Yeah, um, that's a great uh, the, a great thing, and I'll start with uh, with you, Michael. I will um, make you a panelist. So anybody who would like to jump uh, on over to the travel party party section, um, uh, raise your hand, and then I will make you a panelist, and everybody can see each other. That'll be fun. <laughs> Good. While you're coming on, I did want to say um, there are some authors that uh, I like to read to get my Nantucket fix when I can't be there. Um, you probably all know about um, um, Ellen Hildenbrand, uh, who writes romance novels. Um, Francine Matthews writes mysteries placed in Nantucket. And just recently, I came across a fantastic documentary by Rick Burns, and I'm going to guess that he is the son of Ken Burns because it's in that uh, that style. Um, it's a 30-minute documentary on YouTube on Nantucket, and it's gorgeous, and I think you would all love it. Okay, and I'm getting people over there. Um, if you raised your hand, you should be able to do your video and audio. Or you can click on the uh, stop video and uh, that'll allow your <laughs> video to be displayed at the bottom of the screen. All right. All right. Hi, Nancy. We're talking oh, wow. about should we should we take a, a, a another group back to Cuba when we can? <laughs> Na Natasha asks asks were there any historical reenactments there? I did not see any. Um, there should be, and probably they do happen at Hadwin House um, on occasion, um, maybe at the Athenaeum, but I have not I have not observed it. You have it. Are you muted? That was the library, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, who's been to Nantucket? Nancy has. La Follette. Yeah. Right. 
Are you? Do you have a story about something special in your memory banks from going there? It's done. So I've been to Nantucket just once, and and it was like forty years ago. But I remember beautiful sunsets at Matticut and fabulous waves at Surfside. And my favorite restaurant was Brotherhood of Thieves. Oh yes, yes. I I have never eaten there, but I certainly know the name. Yeah, great French fries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful. The restaurants come and go. Um, I mentioned Jared Coffin House used to have a beautiful, yeah. elegant dining room. And there was another one, uh, a mansion of sorts, called India House. And they had fantastic brunches. Um, but they've both gone the way of modernization. Oh, and you know what else I wanted to say, Eileen, while you were on Nantucket for um, Hurricane Bob, I was on Martha's Vineyard for Hurricane Bob. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, sisters in hurricanes. <laughs> I know. Fun. Did they have elm trees that go down too? <laughs> oh, we had trees that came down. Yeah, we were renting a house and uh, yeah, trees came down. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I see Judy Leave on here. She's the... the, the a woman that we sailed with when we were sailing up there on the Choi leave. Oh, Judy, do you have any comments? No. Can you hear? Me? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Can't yeah. See you. Can't see you. Oh, but... no, you can. I, all right. I was just gonna. I was just gonna say, were you with us, Pat, the time that we um, that we were tied up for three days in the Northeaster and couldn't even get off the boat? Mm. Yes. I mean, the wind was so strong and we were starting to run out of food, as I recall, and we tried to kind of get off the boat or at least the husbands tried to get off the boat and were blowing <laughs> around the dock. And it was the first we had to moor out for a while, as I recall. <laughs> I'm trying to think, did we used to go to a place called Dead Eye Dicks? Was that on? Oh, was that, that on? Remember? remember Dave and... and um, Bob used to play and everyone sang, but I, I can't remember if that was in uh, Nantucket Harbor at that time or not. We're talking 50 years ago, people. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time. That's Good funny. memories. Yeah, I, I also don't think I've never heard of Dead Eye Dicks, but I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's probably there anymore if you don't know I, I don't it. Think it is. No. no. We had to go. I think we yeah. <laughs> so Eileen um, um, Eileen, we didn't see the basket because we were seeing your PowerPoint presentation. So oh. if you want to if you still have the basket and you want to show it, um, yeah. everybody could go in speaker view at the top right screen and then they can get a full view of Eileen with the basket. All right. Um, here <laughs> Here's the basket, oh, um, and um, oh, yeah. has a little catch here. Mm -hmm. the, the bottom has the um, maker's name and, and the date, mm -hmm. and the top has uh, the whale, which is attached to all of these Nantucket light ships. Um, mm -hmm. There it is. Beautiful. Yeah. So do any of you um I had another question, Eileen, too. When do they do the regatta? When is the regatta? Um it's in July, I believe. Um and I think it might be end of July. We typically um, would show up in August and it had just finished. But if somebody knows for certain, uh, I, I won't think it's the last word on the date. I think July. Who else was that? What's on one? Sometimes Gretchen is up. So, um, Pat, if, I, I don't know that I would return to Cuba, but I am interested in Galapagos, so let me know if you plan anything for that. <laughs> oh, sure will. <laughs> I see the dunk Oh. 
Hi, Mary. We've been trying to get in. Yeah, we, we, we have competing competing Zoom calls going on here. Oh, dear. Our Did side was calling us. We have, we have a Nantucket story because we had Mary's 70th birthday there with four sets of friends from Eville renting a house of a fellow here in the city who owns a place there. And it was a fabulous place. One of, the, one of the neatest things we did was um, we ordered out a picnic dinner from Sales Seafood. Do you know that? Have you ever heard of that? It, it um, included- There's a row of seafood homes near the docks on one side. Yeah, that, yes. that's where, yeah. Um, clam chowder, corn, sweet corn, New England lobster boil for $20. Wow. 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 <laughs> Two years back. Seven years back. Oh my God. Nine years back. Nine years, Nine years back. back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember in August um, when the, uh, what are they called? The Pleiades? Um, the stars that shoot across the sky? What's the name of it? What is it? Oh, yeah. The, um, the, yeah. The uh, we, would, we would pack a picnic stars. basket and have an evening on the beach watching the stars shoot. That was great. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Star showers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that you were there for a day. We also would go every uh, just about as many times as we could to watch the sunsets on the beach, and that was beautiful. Particularly, uh, Madica. Madica Beach. Uh -huh. yeah. We had some beautiful sunsets. Yeah, yeah here and we did it. We did a Shutterfly book of mm -hmm. our time there which we are sitting here looking at and the various <laughs> things that you've mentioned uh, are in the book. Um, uh, the uh, Sconset Cottages and the, um, the, the bank, yeah. beautiful pictures Pacific of the bank, bank. Yeah. Pacific Bank. Yeah. Oh, um, show us any? The Athenaeum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we have just really enjoyed re yeah. and, and all of our friends who we were with on this trip are supposed to come to our house tomorrow to be sitting six feet apart um, and celebrating four of their birthdays. Oh, fantastic. So we, you know. So we're going to have the book out and we're going to renew the trip with them too. Awesome. And we're cool. mad at ourselves because we didn't get them to sign up for tonight. Well, check out the Rick Burns on YouTube. You will love it. Oh, Rick, Burns. Rick Burns. Rick Burns. Yeah. Burns. Yes. Thirty-minute documentary on Nantucket, and it's just gorgeous, with music. Oh, and everything. Super. Thank you for. Thank you. Yeah, for reminding us. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Yeah. Natasha asked a question on chat that I didn't quite understand, but it's had to do with pronouncing something, and I just want to add that. I didn't know that what I always thought was a quahog, quahog is actually a, a qua, how is it, quag? It's quag. Quag, <laughs> that kind of clam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. My father has gone to quahog. Yeah. So uh, who, who has not gone to Nantucket is interested in now going. <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> you won't be sorry. Um, I, I said once that I have three favorite places in the world, and I've been to, to over 50 countries, but um, um, Tus Tuscany is one, Napa is a second, and Nantucket is the other. Uh, let's let's do that next, next uh, show. Let's ask everyone to put down their name and what their favorite place was. I don't think I could mm. do that, but I have so many. But. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very hard. Yeah. What would you put down? Maybe English. Oh, the, I know what you put down the boundary was. Yeah. You put down the boundary was. <laughs> where? Where? I would put down the boundary waters because I am a really in love nature and being out with God and all that. Canoe. I'd pick the Adirondacks for the same reason. <laughs> Did you grow up in the Adirondacks, Jeff? Yes. I thought so. On Lake Champlain. <laughs> yeah. No. We have spent several vacations at uh, Booth Bay Harbor and- oh, I love Booth Bay. 
Northeast Harbor and uh, Arcadia National Park. Oh, yes. And Evelyn and I one afternoon decided we would go and kind of get isolated. We found this little beach and we had to walk probably a couple hundred yards to get to it. And we got down there and there was maybe six or eight people on the beach also. I mean, it was really isolated. And we were there for a few minutes and finally this lady came over and she says, hello, Dr. LaFollette. She said, I'm uh, wow. a nice in Bloomington. Yeah, wow. <laughs> small world. <laughs> yeah, very small world. Yeah. That's totally cool. Wow. Well, I was hoping to see Dave accordingly tonight. Is he there? Are you there, Dave? I guess not. Okay. Someone, one of my chamber buddies, but he and I connected over in Nantucket because he's spent his college summers up there. Mm. Well, we'll send in the video. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. They're all on YouTube. If you just Google Pat and Eileen's travel parties, they're all there. Oh, <laughs> oh that would be cool. What is it? We, Pat, we Pat, had a nice Pat visit. And Eileen's, what is it? Pat and Eileen's travel parties. Travel parties. Go to YouTube, YouTube and ask for Pat and Eileen's travel parties. Steve has put them all on YouTube. And they're oh, even tonight's? Uh, oh, he'll put tonight's on, but I don't know <laughs> how long it'll take him to do that. Sometimes it's a few days. I don't know. Steve, the guests are arriving tomorrow. No pressure, but <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, it, it, it's pretty easy. I can get it up there tonight. Wow! <laughs> hey, Steve. Awesome. Good, Steve. Good, good, good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it was wonderful to see you all again. Yeah, wow. fantastic. Good to see you, PD. Yes. Good to see and hear you. <laughs> In September, in the end of September, are we going to Oktoberfest or is that in October? Um, we are hoping to do an Oktoberfest. You know, the Germans celebrated from mid-September to mid-October. So we're right in the middle with the end of September. Um, I think it's September 25th. So right now, um, that's, um, I won't say it's cast in stone yet, but it's looking good. <laughs> Real Oktoberfest. <laughs> so get out your beer menus. <laughs> yes, yeah. Every wow. remember a sorority a party. party. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Remember that at the Alpha Yes. yes. He's saying, do, do, leak me in or something. <laughs> 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 I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers told me never drank. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. right. Well, I guess it's time to say adieu, but um, thank you for joining us tonight and um, really love seeing you all and, and having a chance to chat and hear your experiences. So uh, please join us again next next month, September 25th, 5.30, and um, we will put out the news as to what the declared destination is. Um, it's in German. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I wish you all a good evening. Oh, hi, Bart. Thanks, Bart. Be safe. Say hello to your husbands. Will do. Bye-bye.